G'day guys, Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor here for another expert masterclass. Uh, this is actually take two of this masterclass. We uh, had a few technical issues the first time, uh, but Adrian and I are, are super committed to making sure that we do it even better this time. So I'm super happy to have uh, Adrian Falk here from Believe Advertising. So Adrian and I have known each other for a few years now. Uh, we met through Business Blueprint, uh, through Dale Beaumont, uh, and uh, we've connected on a number of occasions. And, and Adrian does some phenomenal work in the PR space. And I think that for our, our audience and our clients who are all small business owners, um, I constantly get the question around, Jackson, how did you get that media exposure and, and what actually did it do for your business? And I'm super excited to unpack Adrian's intellectual property because he's, he's an absolute expert in this space. And I know that he's going to be able to share some really valuable insights to help you get access to the media and actually, as a result, increase your sales overnight. So Adrian, thanks for joining us again, mate. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks again for having me. But it's, uh, it's, it's, I think this has actually been really good timing because we, we did this a couple of weeks ago. I think we're yeah. kind of in the, the, the peak of this whole coronavirus crisis. And I think that the tides have started to turn. So I actually think this is even going to be more relevant now than it was a couple of weeks back, mate. So I'm super excited to, to work through uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this stuff with you and have a conversation about it. Yeah, definitely. So what I'm going to do is uh, for the next, say, half an hour, share my 10 tips and tricks on how you can actually increase your um, sales and leads overnight, and often just with one news story, and it really is possible. Um, time and time again, I've done it for so many clients, just getting them one story um, nationally, or and then it goes on to become internationally. Um, that you know they then just get an influx of leads and it's um yeah just going to actually map out how you can do this um over the next 30 minutes uh so what i'm going to do is just quickly share about who i am i've been going for 18 years um i started my own company at the age of 24 called it believe because no one believed in me pulling out the violins i know and um for the past 18 years worked with so many different people um, including Novak Djokovic three times, which is amazing. So from ASX listed companies through to fashion, food and finance, um, e-commerce gurus, um, business coaches, you name it. I've pretty much done it all over the past uh, 18 years. And um, I started out my career in New York and uh, wanted to always work in advertising after watching Melrose Place. So uh, I moved over there at the age of 20 and then um, came back to Australia and um, after several years of experience in New York, and I've been going ever since. Um, now, starting off, I thought I'd share with you, because a lot of people may not know what is PR. Now, if you think that this webinar is about permanent residency and how you can stay in Australia on a 457 visa, you're probably on the wrong webinar. It's not about permanent residency. Uh, this is all about public relations, which is essentially free advertising. And the brilliant thing is um, public relations is really powerful. Um, in fact, there's been studies to show that a good news story can often be more valuable by like five, 10, even 20 times more than the value of advertising. Um, so it can really increase your brand awareness, sales, traffic to your site, especially nowadays, everything's going more digitally. Um, so often some new sites will even give you a, a direct website link, which is amazing for SEO and driving traffic straight back to you. Um, and also it's going to help you uh, position yourself as an expert in your field as well. Um, a lot of people um, want to get that elusive blue tick on Instagram as well and Facebook. And one of the criteria that Instagram are after you, if you've ever tried to get on Facebook, is you have to submit news stories about yourself or they'll do their own background research. So if you're not showing up in Google or Google News, um, you know, there's no chance in um, help pretty much to get that blue tick. So uh, if you want that blue tick, you're definitely gonna need some publicity to get your name out there as well. Uh, so the main thing which I always love to do with my clients is work out their goals. So um, is it to create, as I mentioned you as an expert, generate leads, you know, speaking to a client today, and they say, you know, their whole thing is not to create awareness and leads, but they want to be in Australian Financial Review just to get like investors on board. While Australian Financial Review, their circulation is pretty small. So compared to news.com, which is like Australia's largest news site, which is up to 11 million viewers, um, AFR is very niche, it's very small, but it serves a different purpose. So everybody has their own sort of goal 
And the main thing is to work out what your goal is and um, work backwards from there. The next thing is to know your audience. Um, so where, if you are wanting to reach out to get more consumers, you have to think, well, where are your um, audience, where, where, where are they actually reading? Like um, if it's a beauty product, you know, you're not gonna obviously go to AFR, you might have to go to Daily Mail or Marie Claire Online or something like that. So less than, um, less than a hard hitting news site. So you have to sort of think, who's your avatar? Where are they reading um, and who are you targeting? Um, so if you don't have a deep understanding of your customer, like publicity probably may not help you because we're going to be throwing out news stories there where your audience isn't reading those sites anyway. Um, and then it does all come down to the angle, especially in these times. In the last few weeks, we were just chatting before, coronavirus, actually, I've been busy getting clients coronavirus type stories. And of course, we never want to take advantage of the situation without a doubt. But like, I've had a property um, tech company that's come to me for publicity because they're doing innovative things with, you know, landlords and tenants with an app. So that is really newsworthy. So getting them in domain, realestate.com, news.com. While a few weeks ago, that story is probably not going to be relevant. So it's always good to know what's going around um, currently in news cycles and then how you can make your story relevant. So uh, we've got Mother's Day coming up in May. So if you've got a beauty product, that might be relevant and leveraging of um, these events. Um, uh, as we mentioned, you know, coronavirus here, unfortunately in Australia at the time of recording this, like there's been no new deaths and cases have really come to a standstill. So now if you sort of go out there with an active coronavirus angle, that may not seem as newsworthy anymore. And maybe it's more like, well, life after coronavirus and how, you know, if you're a retailer or doing something different, what you're actually going to be doing um, after coronavirus, that would be more so newsworthy because everyone's looking beyond uh, the current situation. Um, so your angle has to um, be really um, newsworthy. Um, you have to think, okay, well, firstly, why is it relevant? Who is it affecting? What's the outcome? Um, and also, when's it happening? Um, timing is a bit of the key as well. So if something that's happening, say, in December, and it's um, heading towards May, you probably want to wait off a little bit. Um, so, yeah, constructing angle is uh, the next step. This is just um, some live, um, I guess, real-life experiences. Um, and just to demonstrate, you know, constructing the angle. So what I did for a Terra Interactive, and they're an awesome group of um, architects um, and renderers in Surrey Hills, is they created a whole video of Sydney um, from the year uh, 1800s to 2100. And it was like a matrix 3D look at, realistic look of what Sydney's going to look like from uh, the, the early years right through to year 2100. And so then I obviously pitch that to Seven News um, as an exclusive and saying, hey, do you want to know what Seven, uh, what, what Sydney's going to look like in the year 2100? Well, now you've got an inside exclusive look. And that ran on a Sunday night, just from one news story, which I was saying before. I, I got this four days after working with Tony um, from Interior Interactive. Like, he literally was flooded with leads and inquiries. He had then developers come to him from Indonesia and South America that saw this um, on social media and heard about the amazing work that he did. So it really shows you no matter what industry, like this is um, obviously development, design, um, you can really turn your business around with um, publicity. That's amazing. What was that opportunity worth to, to them? If, if you can I mean, when you it. think about like primetime TV advertising alone for a 30 second ad on a Sunday night is like, several of thousands, maybe $10,000 at least. So to have a four minute spot, you do the maths, you know, um, and then have that at least valued about 10 or 20 times, you know, and then not only that, I'll go back, but that was on their social media. So Seven News Sydney put that on their social media page. It had 224 comments. I mean, this was at the time of me just doing the screenshot, so it's probably a lot more since then, uh, 208 shares. So not only do you have that component of when people see it um, on the TV, but then there's those who may not have watched Seven News, but 
seeing it on their Facebook page. And I think Seven News has over a million followers on Facebook alone. So it's really powerful. So it's like um, you get two two bites of the cherry in some ways, you know, um, because, uh, and then you can also amplify this out on your social media. I have clients, um, like I'll show you the next person, Matt LaPree, he's an e-commerce guru. So he does a little reel of all the media um, interviews that I've arranged for him and then boosts that through Facebook to target new clients. Um, and uh, it works really well because it's instant social proof. It's um, brand credibility. Um, so one story here, which you got on the homepage of Daily Mail, is I meet the guy that makes over 100000 a month. He was a dropout from uni, and now he shares how you can too, which is really um, cool. People like to know, yes, they like to read these stories of entrepreneurs, but kind of gone in the days where, um, you know, meet John Smith who makes millions. That's nice, but everyone wants to know, what's in it for me? How can I do that? Too. So you have to make sure that you're giving people like usable content as well. Um, and on that note, Adrian, I guess, is there a, a minimum, I guess, success story? Because I guess there's many people out there that maybe not ha haven't realized the same level of success as, as Matt. So <laughs> yeah. At what level would it be a compelling story for the media to take a bite at? Um, even it doesn't, I mean, obviously you don't need to be making that much money a month, but even it could be a, like, in the time of coronavirus, everyone was doing those pivot stories. So, you know, there was one that I read in the Sydney Morning Herald where it was an international staging company that was uh, creating sets for uh, concerts, like pink and everything like that. And now they're doing like um, at home stand up desks or uh, pieces of furniture, you know. So if you have that um, story of like how, you know, you were facing turmoil, everyone likes the underdog as well. And now you've sort of like, rose above everything else like a world pandemic, then that's like a good news story. Um, the news doesn't just like, you know, they want to hear good news. They don't want to just report doom and gloom. It just has to be relevant to what's going on. Um, uh, a few days after with Matt's initial story, it was Valentine's Day. So remember I was saying you have to sort of see what else is going on in the world. So I go, Matt's Valentine's Day this week. Are you single? And he goes, yes. And he's telling me how he finds it really hard to find a girlfriend because all the people are just after his money. So then I did that as a separate story. It's like, meet the guy who can't find love this Valentine's Day. That got 29,000 shares on Daily Mail's Facebook page. So that's not even the number of people that have read it. It's like way more than obviously 29,000. If people have like 400 friends on Facebook, you can do the maths. It's quite a lot of people that are actually reading this uh, story, which is crazy. Um, and that's it there, like on their Facebook page there too. Um, and then it made international news. So talking about how, you know, if you have a good angle, other news outlets, um, and if it's universal, like love is universal, I guess, and making money. So you put the two together. And it's a, a formula for success, ultimately. Um, also, I guess, you know, being good looking doesn't hurt either. Um, so, uh, you know, Matt was on the home page of the mirror. And, um, you know, when you think about this, like wars going on in the world, there's always something like to have such a big feature in, in, on the mirror, the, the leading news site in the UK is, is pretty impressive. Um, and that's the story there. Um, I even managed to get him then on uh, Fox News in Arizona. This was actually before the time of coronavirus. So you don't need to, you know, maybe 10 years ago, even five years ago, um, you would have to travel to the US to do like a media tour or, or UK or whatever, because they'd want you in a studio. Um, but even last year before coronavirus hit, like Matt decided to take off and chill out in Costa Rica for like six weeks. I had arranged for him to do worldwide media interviews and he just called in via Skype um, and they just uh, used the footage and then um, broadcasted that live. So um, the next angle I did for Matt was he was so busy now he wanted to look for an assistant. So once again, you know, talking about universal things like employment and success and how you can travel the world with Matt and help him out. So ultimately it's the world's coolest job. And um, yeah, if you go to the, my YouTube uh, channel on my website, believeadvertising.com, you'll be able to see all these US TV uh, clippings that I put on there. 
I even got him on um, CNN's news channel, which is the headline news channel, which was amazing. This got broadcasted pretty much across the globe. And uh, yeah, once again, when you equate this to an ad, like this was a five minute piece on map in prime time um, that was broadcasted not only across the US, South America, internationally. Um, it's amazing, yeah. It's crazy to see these angles. And I, I guess looking at it in hindsight, you can see the, the momentum that you've created through this, Adrian. And it, it's, it's, it's super creative because I think that many people look at this very static approach to, to PR, right? It's all about kind of look at me, this is my story. But you've kind of repackaged the, the, the whole idea of getting media for, for Matt, but all of these really creative angles. And I guess this is where you, your experience kind of speaks for itself. So what was the timeline on this, Adrian, in terms of from the first feature all the way through to, I guess, this, this now we're looking at kind of the third or fourth angle. How long was yeah. it for you to develop and roll out that strategy? It happened really quickly. It's, that's the beauty. And I, I get such an adrenaline rush each and every time. It's like this is my addiction in some ways, which is good, I guess, because I, I love what I do. So I was um, introduced to Matt by Dale, actually, from Business Blueprint. Um, that it was on a Sunday. By that week, it was like a few days later. I had already written up Matt's story and it was on the um, homepage. It was the first story ever was news.com.au. And then, um, then we, Daily Mail then syndicated that story and then ran it. And then that was it. And I thought, oh, okay, cool. That's awesome. And he did really well. And actually, if you go to my website, um, Matt did a video testimonial just on that one news story how it increased his business 10 times over just which was crazy he had people registering for his free webinar and then paying without even talking to him for his course which was you know, the ultimate goal which was amazing um but then we a few days later after that so it was probably into the second week that's when valentine's day was approaching we did that that just like it's like a snowball added fuel to the fire um it was so massive. And he goes, Adrian, I've got all these leads. I don't know what to do. I need an assistant. So then I think about two weeks after that, so already in maybe it was only the first month, I'm getting him like worldwide media coverage within four weeks, like talking about, um, you know, how he's looking for assistant. Um, not only that, he then um, wanted to go to Dubai. He's always wanted to go to Dubai. I hadn't been for a while. So I then contacted Golf News and I said, let me see if I can get your coverage over there. So Golf News is the leading news site in UAE. They did a, a news story on him that was the inside center spread with their own photo shoot and everything like that. And they had like a point to that story on their front page of the newspaper and online as well. Like it's amazing, you know, so um, it just shows you the power of publicity. So definitely by week eight, he was um, getting international media coverage and then after he came back from Dubai he moved to Koh Samui and then I arranged then an LA media trip for him and he went to TMZ's channel uh, to do this interview. Um, I got him on KTLA as well so um, yeah you can check them all out on my site for leave advertising. Phenomenal, it's crazy. And it's, I mean another success story is good old Harry Sanders, he's the world's nicest guy as well. Um, Harry, four years ago, when um, before I started working with him, was homeless at the age of 17. So last year when I started working with him, he was at 21, and he was living under a bridge in Melbourne for a period of time, being homeless. Um, he always had the knack for SEO, starting um, from a young age, helping his dad out um, with his boating business. And um, his whole thing is about becoming an ethical SEO agency and um, pulling himself out of homelessness. Once again, this one news story that ran on Daily Mail, um, then we got him coverage um, on Sunrise. So we did an interview there. Uh, Sunrise obviously is based in Sydney, but he just had to go to the Melbourne studio and um, he, he did his interview from there. Um, but then it went worldwide. Um, I got him on BBC Radio. People started calling him up in the UK saying, Harry, we love your story. Because don't forget, people buy from people, not companies. So if you can get your story out there, people are going to be more um, interested to resonate with you and more likely to buy from you but rather than a company. Um, so people are saying, Harry, I want you to do my SEO. I really you know, feel for you and I, I love your motivating story. So he never knew anything about London. Don't forget, he was just 21. Four years prior, he was homeless. 
few months later, Harry was referred to me in March. By August, he already had an office in London to show you the timeline, wow. which was crazy. Yeah, like that's how fast this moved as well for Harry. Then I then fueled the fire by writing a press release saying, you know, meet the high, you know, the high school dropout where he kind of just scraped through high school, who now, you know, has a leading SEO agency and now opening up in London as well. And BBC TV loved that. And they go, when can Harry come to London for an interview? And I said, well, next week. And I go, Harry, you got to get yourself on the plane. And he just then happened to wear his SEMrush shirt. And they saw that internationally. Now SEMrush, like, have formed a partnership with him. And he was actually then named SEMrush's agency of the year for currently, which is amazing. That's like a big win. Yeah. For is that a just a big coincidence, old. Adrian? Or did he just happen to wear that on the day? He, yeah, he honestly, he's just like this... Um, He's like this, I, not geeky, but he just loves all things tech. And I think, you know, it's like a cool thing, cool logo. Uh, he honestly didn't think anything of it. Yeah. Um, this was the radio interview that was on BBC World Service. You know, you can get this anywhere in the world, including the Middle East. It's crazy. So uh, this is what um, I get for clients. Once again, the mirror in the UK, um, school dropout living under the bridge turns life around. It's all about creating good angles. Um, but then also tweaking it and working out where you want to be. So after we did all of that, like Harry said, well, look, I don't want to just be known as that homeless kid because not that there's anything wrong with it, but I feel like I've moved on from there. Like I've got a multi-million dollar agency now and I want to be, you know, known for that. So then we drafted a story for Smart Company and you have to write in a way, I guess, when you're writing for Smart Company, different for Australian um, the Daily Mail, like, and um, same for weight loss products, especially now, every point, hibernation um, or isolation, I should say, uh, and soon they're going to be coming out of isolation. Everyone's going to want to be shedding weight. So if you've got a weight loss product, um, now's the time to shine. Um, with a creative headline, like a beast mother who was too big to watch TV because of a tire of fat around her neck, this is five stone by ditching a junk food addiction. May seem long, but it, it definitely grabs your attention. And this ran um, in the UK uh, and Australia for uh, a diet client, uh, Terry Ann 123's diet. Um, and then we got that once again here um, in the UK too, which is massive. And you think about the power, that's why I love getting clients international coverage as well. It's Australia, I mean, it's brilliant as a country. There's only 25 million of us. You know, you go to the States where there's like over 10 times that their new sites have so much more power and clout. Um, yeah, this is Terry Ann here talking about, now this looks like the, you know, an ad, but it's literally editorial content. They used a video of her talk, talking about a diet. If this was like a paid ad embedded in a Daily Star site, it literally would cost tens of thousands of pounds, you know, which is nearly close to $100,000. So you can see the value of um, publicity um, and how much it's better than, uh, I guess, paid advertising. Now, advertising still has its time and place. Don't get me wrong. You know, I've got clients that, if they are an international client, they still want to do their brand advertising, but not everybody has those budgets. Um, this is for an Australian client here that, you know, um, was a junk food addict. So you can see that um, before and after stories work really well. This was a massive site, whoops, uh, that I did for a client, uh, you know, the grandmother of five that lost 30 kilos in three months without exercise. You know, at the end of the day, no one wants to exercise and everybody wants to lose weight. And it's actually true. I've spoken to um, Anna in depth and, um, she did do lose this weight without exercise. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, this was like the lead story in Daily Mail. Um, you know, there's obviously magazines like Prevention and doing different stories like diet swap, swap stories and that. So there's all these different angles. In fact, 123 Diet, um, they were the number two search diet in 2018 in Google Trends with, above keto and FODMAP and everything like that, which is amazing. So just through me doing news stories for them on a continual basis. Everybody was Googling 123 Diet in Australia and wanting to know how they can get their products. And every time I got a news story for them, 
uh, their website would crash and they'd sell out of product. And that's why they expanded internationally and they're now based in the US. They started off just working from the Gold Coast, a husband and wife team. Um, once again, uh, the, the mum that can fit into a wedding dress and lost 42 kilos. Um, so you can see it literally goes on and on <laughs> and on. Yeah, uh, even TV, then TV picks up sometimes, you know, they read what's going on in the news and they want to get on to the action. So Slim by Nature, another diet client. Um, so it all starts with like getting your message out there and that's using a press release. Um, a press release, I like to write in a way that um, the media can use um, as a as a guide, and so then we pretty much spilt out the story for them. So you have to understand the news outlet that you're pitching to and you want to write it in that way. Um, so writing a great press release, um, you have to have a strong creative angle, which we've spoken about. You want to include quotes um, from yourself or customers. So um, it's one thing to say how amazing your diet is, but if you have before and after testimonials, that's even more awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, that's where press release really comes in handy. Um, then when you're distributing the press release, don't forget to put your contact details in, on there for your mobile phone. You want to make sure you have voicemail. The number of times, like if you're trying to do PR yourself and I hear like journalists are trying to contact you, they're not going to leave a message. They want you to be available there and now. And often it's the person that's always ready, but readily available that the media are gonna use as their go-to expert because they know they're on deadline. It's easy for them to, to just pick up the phone or email and you're gonna be really responsive. So that's one thing is to um, really make sure that you're, you're able to be um, contacted easily. Um, and then also um, working out like as well, like with your press release, how you're gonna pitch it to a newspaper versus radio versus TV. So um, that also you have to sort of keep in mind as well. This was um, the uh, photo shoot that actually Matt did in uh, UAE for Golf News and his uh, quote, you know, saying within one week, believe advertising PR has completely transformed my business. A week from starting, um, I received news stories about me all over the world and sales from my e-commerce training academy now flowing daily, which is crazy. And they still do actually just recently. Um, we did a story for Matt where no longer is he looking for an assistant to travel the world, but he's looking for a VA, someone from anywhere in Australia or internationally. All you need is a laptop and Wi-Fi and uh, you can work for him. So that did really well as well, which is amazing. So it's sort of looking at what's going on currently and adapting your strategy as well. Um, so press releases are great to distribute your message um, and you also um, want to make sure that it's going to be relevant to them. So as I said, just keep working backwards in your mind. If your goal is to be in the Australian Financial Review, make sure the way you've written it, the story is going to be relevant to them. Um, and then once you're published, um, obviously it's always nice to say thank you to them and, and um, you know, then you will be top of mind. Um, you know, I've had clients, whether it's a real estate client, even Harry, a year later, um, you know, journalists will still reach out to them if they're looking for an SEO expert or a real estate expert. Um, keeping in touch with journalists is going to help you, you know, when they are doing like quick turnarounds and they need that expert quote from someone. Um, if you don't, if they don't run your story, um, obviously don't hassle them and say, why not? Um, you can simply just move on to the next media outlet. You never want to burn your bridges. Um, they just simply don't have the time to give you feedback as well why they're not going to run your story. Um, social media influencers uh, are another great way. Um, there's the rise of the micro-influencer. Uh, no longer do you need to pay like hundreds of thousands of dollars to get someone like Kylie Jenner to uh, promote your detox tea, for example. Using like um, mummy bloggers or they've got a really um, good concentrated level of following. So if you've got a food product or a fitness product, reaching out to local influencers um, that have followers of 10,000 or less, um, you know that they're gonna be really interested in their product. You can talk to them and negotiate for them to post about your product um, without payment, just giving them 
you know, some, some product in return or giving them your service in return. And it's a great way of um, you then reposting their content, giving you um, credibility as well. Uh, so social media influencers can also add another layer of um, getting you more brand awareness across the globe. Um, obviously, news appearances are awesome as well. And now with, um, you know, Zoom and Skype, it's becoming even more common thanks to coronavirus. Um, you won't need to be in the studio. Um, here, KTLA News, the biggest news station in Southern California, Matt did fly to LA um, because there was an amazing opportunity. Um, but now I think in these times, um, I've even, when I wrote my book, uh, I got on Canadian Breakfast TV and that was just via um, Zoom. So you can, uh, you can do it via uh, Skype and uh, video conferencing now, which is awesome. And as we've seen before, like, there's one thing to get that media coverage, which is awesome, but you can amplify it so much more through your social media channels, your website, as seen in sections. Um, it just gives you social proof um, and um, it helps, you know, share the message to, to everyone else like LinkedIn that, um, you know, look at the latest news story featuring me, essentially. Um, and then obviously celebrating success, having uh, once coronavirus is over, which, you know, uh, you can have like events and parties. Um, this is my 18th year of business. I was saying for the last three years, I've been throwing a birthday bash for myself, inviting like the black book of my celebrity and media contacts. And last year's party even made it on the homepage of Yahoo, which was pretty amazing. And each year, Daily Mail write about it, like all the reality TV stars that were there and what goes on. Um, but it's an awesome way of, of promoting yourself, essentially. Um, so having an event. Um, as I mentioned, I even, I put, I've always wanted to write a book my whole life. So uh, it took me a year to do, and last year I finally self-published it. And then I put all these skills to the test and um, everything I've just told you, I had to do for myself, which was the hardest thing ever because uh, you're probably the most critical of yourself as well. So um, yeah, so my book then I managed to get um, uh, international media coverage. I was in the Daily Express, um, which is one of the leading news sites in the UK. Um, they were talking about the royal family and Brexit and there on, I was on the homepage. And the angle I went for my book is like, and it's nothing to do with publicity or advertising, it's like my life principles about how you can start living the best life you've always dreamed of starting from today and um about that one element is my weight loss journey how like i've always wanted no it sounds superficial but apps for 40 and uh talking about that uh but then as i know from previous experience um the weight loss angle works so that's what they ran with and then it, last year it was for around Father's Day, Channel 9 ran on their Nine Honey site, you know, the dad that shed 15 kilos and turned his life around. Um, so talking about what's going on in the world, whether it's Mother's Day, Christmas, Father's Day, you can um, hook into your story and to make it relevant. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, you know, it's even uh, since then, as I mentioned, uh, Canadian Breakfast TV, uh, PR is an awesome way to give you credibility, get your deal over the line um, and just getting yourself out there, which is pretty much an, an authoritative way to making you an expert. That's phenomenal, mate. And I guess you can see the, the, the amount of time and effort that goes into this. And I think that most people overlook how complex it can be if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, like there's, there's all of these sites out there like Source Bottle and, and, and these other, other places where you can get PR opportunities, but probably yeah. not to the caliber that you're talking about, right? Well, definitely. I mean, these sites like Source Bottle, they're very specific. So it might be we're looking for, um, I'm trying to think, something that's really niche. So like, you know, someone that's treated on their partner during coronavirus or something like that you know where it's, it could be and that's just like and it was actually one example so it's not going to suit everyone and you might just be um mentioned in the story and um that's okay depending on what your objectives are you know that those types of stories are also good depending on the news outlet 
but it's not going to be like exclusives like this where you're packaging yourself up. Um, yeah. Um, so definitely you can check it out, but, um, often it's, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard for you to, to fit into it because they've got their predefined mold and template. And, um, yeah, if you don't fit that criteria and don't forget everybody else is responding to that one call out as well. So, there's so much competition within 100%. that one thing too. And there was a few little nuances that I saw throughout your presentation, whereby you'd used uh, Google AdSense to market your business alongside a lot of these, these news articles. So obviously you're not just a PR consultant, um, you, you offer a full advertising solution. So strategically, how do, you, how do you work through that to make sure that we're, you're getting and leveraging the most out of the coverage? Yeah, sure. Like, I mean, like I had a client that came to me last week and I was about, you know, I looked at her website and she just said, yeah, I want it. And she came to me for PR, but then I was looking at her site and it's like, you know what? You need to have a lead magnet. Um, have you installed your Facebook pixel? And it's like, no, what's that? You know, so before you do that, if you're driving traffic to your site, you want to make sure you've got all your ducks in the row. And I'm happy to help people along that process too because there's so much opportunity you can leverage from. And as you've seen, like, yeah, remarketing is, is imperative no matter who you are these yeah. days. So if someone goes to your website through publicity um, and click on you, then they're not going to come back probably again. Maybe the phone rings or they've got to deal with kids or whatever. But then through remarketing, you can literally reach those people across all major news sites um, for the next 90 days through advertising, um, which is awesome. And then also through Facebook as well. So um, having these little systems in place where you can maximize your return on investment and publicity to get those leads and sales is really crucial. That's fantastic, mate. And look, I think it just goes to show that you, you really need to know what you're doing because once again, you, you might be lucky enough to get some publicity, but if you're not leveraging those eyeballs, then, uh, then a lot of that opportunity might go down the drain. Yeah, no doubt. So let's talk about, I guess, who is PR for and not for? I guess, is, do you need to be at a certain level to be PR ready? No, I think like, I mean, it depends on your objective. Um, I ultimately think if, if I don't think you're newsworthy enough, like, I wouldn't take on anyone that doesn't have a good story because obviously I've been doing this for 18 years, the last thing... I want is a bad reputation. So in fact, like when I speak to my clients, I guarantee it's like, I will guarantee that you'll get into one of your chosen sites, you know? So we work that all out beforehand um, to make sure everyone's on the same page. There's no point promising some startup they're going to be an AFR. So that's why it's important to discuss, discuss upfront, you know, what are your goals? Where do you want to be um, to make sure we're all aligned? Um, so most people, they do have like an interesting angle. It's just then crafting that story and working that angle to, to that news outlet from working backwards and seeing combined with what's going on in the world. Like I have a financial services client, so talking about, um, you know, super and whether you should take your money out and stuff like that, you know, that's all very timely as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, if anyone's not sure, I'm always happy to speak with um, any of your, I guess, uh, clients or, you know, people watching this and happy for you to reach out to me and say, hey, I've got this. What do you think? Do you think this is? Um, because sometimes uh, we may be too modest and uh, think, you know, that, uh, you know, we, we're not newsworthy enough. You know, like when I first spoke to Harry, he never volunteered. He was homeless. And I kept on saying, look, yeah, your story's newsworthy-ish, but... You know, is there anything more? And then he said, look, I didn't know if I should share this, but I was homeless um, and this is what happened to me. And it's like, wow, you know, so that's really powerful. So sometimes you need an external person to see beyond your story so they can Makes pull sense. out what's going to be good. Fantastic, mate. And, and I guess typically how long does a, a normal PR campaign go for? Is there normally like a minimum amount of time that you'd want to stick at it to make sure that you, you get a good outcome? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Honestly, I've had clients that have been with me for years, like 10 years. I launched um, Vodka O. It was literally three guys from a garage that um, that wanted to have Australia and the world's best vodka. And ultimately, they did. James Packer, 
brought in and wow. um, he then uh, sold off the company just recently to a Saudi for $45 million. You can Google Botco and ASM Liquor and then James brought on Robert De Niro and we launched a Botco co-created with Robert called Botco 6100 in, in Australia and the US. And um, yeah, I mean, that was amazing. That was a 10 year journey, which was good. Um, often sometimes people, and I'm honest with them, like if their business is in Australia, and we've been on every news outlet already, and there's not much more to say, that's it, that's all you need. You know, sometimes it is just that one story that's gonna get you um, out of the gate and running, and um, that's fine too. So I don't really um, really expect clients to, to commit to, to a year or anything like that, because it's not fair to them. There's only sometimes only so much you can say without slicing or dicing the same story. So. Yeah, everyone's different on a case by case basis and what they're wanting. But yeah, there's, uh, yeah, the good thing is you don't have to like lock yourself in for a year or two. Yeah, yeah, makes perfect sense. Awesome, mate. So for anybody who's watching this and they might want to maybe have a conversation, learn a bit more about what you do at Believe, what would be the next steps for them, mate? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you'd like to email me, um, my email address is actually goes through straight from my website, believeadvertising.com. So maybe jump on there, have a re read further about and see some of the video testimonials from my clients about how PRs help them and the stories they've generated. And then you can um, contact me through there, through the form and I'm happy to chat or you can call me. Um, I work with clients literally across the globe. Um, so uh, yeah, there's my number for Sydney and Melbourne, um, but then I've also had clients internationally. So yeah, happy to help anywhere because the brilliant thing about publicity is that, uh, yeah, there's media outlets worldwide, so it's awesome. Fantastic, mate. You've shared so much value and there's a lot of actionable insights from this and um, you're always so generous with your time. So uh, I'm sure anybody who's interested um, in just having a conversation, even learning a little bit more, getting an understanding of even some potential PR angles that you could utilize um, with Adrian's wealth of experience, make sure you do reach out. Um, phenomenal resource and it'll definitely help you get the results that you want using the power of the media. So Adrian, thanks again, mate. I really appreciate you uh, jumping on again for, for take two. Mm -hmm. I think we delivered on our promise, mate. I think we nailed it this time. So uh, yeah, no. yeah, I'm super pumped to get this out to, uh, to the community and uh, help more people uh, grow and scale their business. Thanks again for having me. Thanks again, mate. We'll catch up soon. Yeah.